Right, we just do a little bit of uh, the stream. The babbling brook that Wordsworth followed with Dorothy, his sister, and his best friend, Samuel Coleridge. And like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if um, Tennyson had been here as well. And other ones, other poets that liked Exmoor. Byron's daughter, Lovelace. Very intelligent, pioneering woman, inventor, mathematician. She lived further over, of course, near Porlock. They had an estate over there. The Lovelaces, big mansion. Well, gone now, the mansion. I, a lot of them have gone. I think when the Industrial Revolution came and they didn't have the peasants, um, a lot of these places folded up. Here's the stream, which I've walked through before in my life as a child. It's quite fast today. It's quite fast today. We've got a long walk ahead of us. We've got all day though. I saw, and there's no wind. It's blue sky. And there's no one about. It's midweek. Well, it's Thursday now. Can you hear the stream, everyone? The babbling brook. If I lived over here, I'd be out here every day. It's an hour's drive. It can be less than that. If the, if the roads were clear, you could probably do it in 40 minutes. Hour's not bad, though. It only takes about half an hour to get to Cheddar. I've got Crook's Peak to fit in. I thought I might do that on Saturday. I've got to see how fit I am. Now, if I've recovered from today's walk. And like I said, I'm doing today, which is supposed to be done on the 7th. But it's not going to be like this, the weather. So I thought, no. Do it on a nice day. Um, you can have a quiet, reflective walk. Another time. Yeah. My have Daisy I and Amber to my both grand. cameras. <coughs> Don't play up today. Um I'm keeping my coat on for now. I'm just gonna I'm using Sony, I'm just gonna practice with it. Uh, already I haven't even got very far, the battery's even though I charged it up, the camera, I think sometimes it didn't charge up properly um, for some strange reason. Um, it's already, I've already had to put the charger on, I haven't even got up the coom yet. And other times it can last me five hours, it's really weird. But it's a lovely day today. It really is blue sky. The babbling brook's babbling away. The fungi, some fungi out. Um, really will start appearing soon. The fungi, the beautiful oak trees, look. The gnarled oak trees. That once they lose their leaves, will really look dead. The ferns, look how the ferns have died down so quickly, even in a week. I mean, there won't be any heather, but there might be gorse. Oh, God, isn't it gorgeous here? I say every time I come here, I, I can't help but feel blessed, privileged, and you know, my little Eden. It's true. It's my little Eden. I wish I never, wish I hadn't lost that bloody poem. Somebody coming. Oh, someone's always coming. And that, just video some of these trees a minute, or someone's coming. Right, let me turn it off a minute. Again, look at 
the lovely trees though, look at them. And you've got the sunshine breaking through and earlier there was mist. When you when the camera catches the mist, you get some really good shots. That's okay, if you can hear the camera, but it's, it's playing up, it always does at the start of a walk. On and off, on and off, it's terrible. I didn't want to have to charge it up yet. So it's, just, it's like a bit of music in the background. It's so awful, isn't it? I really have had some heavy rain since I was up here not long ago. I mean, look at that lovely picture there. You can't not take a picture of it, can you? I just love, I, I, do you know what, when I'm walking up the coom, because I mean, one, once I'm out of the coom, that's it for here. I don't actually, um, once you cross the, the stream here, and especially when you cross the next one, that's it. That is it for the Holford Coombe, the Hodges Coombe. Two rivers meeting, look. One coming down from that way, from Somerton Coombe. Then you've got Slaughterhouse Coombe and uh, Shepherd's Coombe. You have these different streams all meeting, rushing down the hills, going out to across the fields and out to sea. Near Kilv, near East Quantock Head. I just love this place. I can just breathe in and feel the, all the oxygen all over me. I just feel refreshed straight away. Now this is where you can get feet wet very quickly. And it's fast. Now if you remember I came out here the other week. Right. And um, not that long ago, and it wasn't fast. Now we now we've got to try and find a place across. Okay, not easy, by the way, because we're going that way. I knew this would happen. I knew we'd have this trouble. So where are you going to cross, Sheila? Where's the the best place to cross? It's quite deep there, you see, if you don't, you put your foot, you'll be up over your shoes, straight away there. Um, the only place you can really go, I think, is to get onto that middle bit and stretch over. Unless you can cross further down here, let's have a look before, because otherwise I'm going to get wet feet and they'll be wet all day. This looks like a better opportunity here. Does it? Yeah. If we can get down, that is. Now, because I, I can't jump, because I'll, I'll put my hip out. Um, but this is the best place to cross here. But it's too far down. It's not for someone with long legs. So, what, might, what are you going to do? It's very fast here, look. It's a dilemma, Sheila, isn't it? Hmm. It's a definite dilemma. Look how deep it is there. You could swim in that. Yeah, and then so if you um, say you got in through there, you got you'd have to climb through all that those trees. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm. I'm um, you know, you'd have to climb through there, she'd have to climb through there. So what are you going to do, Gal? Don't know. But look at these lovely trees with all the mosses on them. They're saying, be careful, Sheila. You don't want to have wet feet at the start of the walk, do you? Of course, someone said, well, you could take your shoes off. That's no good there. This is the best place, but it's too far down. Very fast there, look. My legs aren't long enough. Um, 
No, it's, it's going very, very fast. This is the best place. Here. I'd have to jump. I reckon I could jump if I didn't have my bag on. But I could, I could hurt myself because I'm old now. Go jumping down there. What about here? Could you scramble up the bank here? No. Right, there's only one thing for it. Actually, you're just gonna have to walk straight across, girl. I might, yeah. Just gonna have to walk straight across. And I think the best way to do it is put the camera away. Right, folks, I'm gonna get over and I'll let you know when I get over the other side. Right, folks, I had to walk along the bank over the other side. But I managed to cross here. But I just, because I've now entered Somerton Coombe, I decided to do it. Instead of going up Shepherd's Coombe, I've decided to do Somerton Coombe instead, which I haven't done for a long time. I've walked up the top of that hill before now where I found some, some horns once, uh, antlers. Yeah, look at it. This is nice. Yeah, do this. I haven't done it for a long time, this coom. Really is. You wait till after the storms at the weekend. This is gorgeous. I love these coombs, you know. This is Somerton Coombe. And uh, what I can remember, there is a track that take me out and I'll end up on the main track near the Macmillan track um, at some point as well. There's also a chance folks because we're in this quiet coombe that we could catch ticks by the way. That's a big risk. It's a big risk tick. They're still about. Um, but we might see some deer. I'm not quite sure where the stags gather. I've seen loads of deer here before when they're hiding from the hunt. Yeah. So they come, the hunt takes place in these coombs. All the coombs here, the hunt. Yeah, I've had the, I've seen the huntsman with his gun, he's on his saddle, he's got a gun in a leather holster. Yeah, I'm glad I'm, I've, I'm glad that made me change my direction actually, to come up this coombe. Yeah, it's good. It might not be a very good track further up though, but so uh, we will be still en route to where I'm going. Um, we'll still be on the, we're just going up a different coombe basically, that's all. In fact, up there, up on top of that hill over there, is lower hair nap and higher hair nap. And the plan today is to end up there, but n not yet. Not yet. Oh God, it's gorgeous here, isn't it? All these coombs are so flipping great, everyone. I'm just hoping the Sony won't play up. I'm having to keep the... the Kodak on charge. I don't even know if it's charging, to tell the truth. I don't know. Well, I'm just leaving it on. God, it's so lovely, isn't it? <gasps> You'll have to forgive the noise. It's the Kodak. It's doing a bit of charging and then it turns off and then it turns on. <sighs> yeah, sometimes you think you see a deer and it turns up just to be a broken piece of tree. <sighs> Yeah, I haven't been up here for several years, this one. No, not for several years. In fact, the last time I came, I didn't go up it, I came down it. <sighs> 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 yeah.
Yeah, I like to keep to the main tracks. Like I said, ticks are still about. And they did say September is one of the dodgy months for some reason. Uh, well, it's, it's October now. It's October. I think it's so, sort of um, something like October the 3rd. Or it could be the 4th already. And I think I'm on the right side of the stream for getting the path which should take me on a windy track with beautiful views um, over to the, the Naps. So, these coombs are quite remote. The other one that I normally go up, Hodges Coombe and Shepherd's Coombe, they're our main routes for people linking up with Bicknola Post. Right, I'm going to turn off for a second, folks. Be back on again soon.